ladies and gentlemen, the boys. Thank you for coming on Bustin' with the Boys. My name is Taylor Lewan. This is my young gentleman next to me, Will Compton. The boy. I'm so excited to have you on today. You know why? Because we're going to have a little lesson. You guys are little tiny puppies. You're just getting potty trained. Puppy. And you guys are getting more responsibility as you go, and I'm really happy for you. What I need you to do, if you can listen to me, listen to my soothing voice. I need you to go. You need to pull out your phone. If you're driving, pull over. Park. Look at your phone. Go on Bussin'. WTB, that's for Twitter and Instagram. You need to follow and just like everything. Be that annoying guy that likes all of it just so, just so you're trying to get attention. Do that. Go to YouTube. I need you to go on YouTube. I need you to subscribe because there's a lot of things we're doing well here. But one thing, if I had to put in a column of could do better <laughs> or needs work, subscribers. We need the little babies to do it. And if you subscribe and you forget about us, guess what? We still getting them clicks, my babies. All right? So it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay because I'm going to hold your hand through the whole thing. Boy. All right. Our guest today is probably my biggest nightmare come true. My guest today, our guest today, the bustling with the boys, was Mike Vrabel, the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Not only is he a head coach, before that, he was with the Houston Texans for two years. Once as the D.C., and then the year before that was a linebacker. We keep going backwards. It's like a reel. It's like a Quentin Tarantino movie. We're going backwards before we go forwards. So now we're going backwards even farther. Now we're at Ohio State. He plays the, he, he coached there for, I believe, one or two years. Not really important because it's Ohio State and nobody cares on the bus. <laughs> so now we go back, and I'm going to just go on a long way here. The man played 14 years in the NFL. Boy. If you're thinking, how good is that? Well, the answer is the average in the NFL is three and a half years. So pretty good. Okay? Okay, he did pretty good. A lot of guys don't do as good. So he did pretty good. All right, 14 years there. Played at Ohio State before. So you can tell he doesn't make the best life decisions. But I will tell you, the man is very charismatic. He's a great leader. Um, he's got a lot of fun conversation. He just absolutely butchers Will. It's very unfortunate to see. And I'm looking at one of my best friends on the highway like roadkill. And I don't know what to do. Do I drag him off the road or just let him suffer? Or just wait for that semi-truck to hit him again so it's, we know for sure he's dead. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't going to make it regardless. Um, I want to give a little shout-out to our boys, uh, the Quaker City Nighthawks. Why? Because that's a dope AF. Because, see, I'm 2019, babies, and I'm, I'm 27 years old. And look at me, dude. I'm so hip with it. Quaker City Nighthawks AF. All right, the coolest intro song we've got. That's our intro song, and it's a dope name. Thank you to those guys for helping us out with that whole thing. So I don't know what else to say other than you are now bussing with the boys. Thank boys. you. Boys. Big hugs, and remember, tiny baby kisses. Love it, Jesus. Uh, PP, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you look at the sticker, uh, zoom in on the sticker right above Rabe's head? The one that says hail and maize and blue? That one right there? You got that right there, right above his head, right there? He's just like just looking up at the ceiling on top of him. Just want you to know. Hey, you see, not going too good. You see, we, we've, had, we've had to tape a couple. Yeah. Can only imagine. Good ones, huh? Yeah, <laughs> this bus was picked up in Mississippi. So. What were they using it before this? What were they doing with it before this? It was, it was, like, it was a NASCAR there. bus. Like they were taking it to different NASCAR events. Yeah, it just the partying. Ring. It actually ran? Yeah, yeah, it used to run. Nice. Yeah. And now it's Will's home. We're trying to get it running again. <laughs> Call Jeb. Yeah, dude, Jeb will get dude, anything going. Yeah. Jeb got this thing, the generator running. Good for Jeb. We rolling? All right. Thank you for coming on Bustin' with the Boys. Will and I don't want to be here tonight. Uh, that makes three of us. <laughs> we are. That we are. Di- we're about to go I, down a I, hey, dark road. Let's of tell disrespect. the truth now. Let's tell the truth. We wanted to come on the bus. I did. Okay, cool. So I, we wanted you, hey, I, wanted, I wanted you to come on, too. I wanted right. you to come on, too. That's You've been dodging it? me. That, that, That's that, not daddy, true. Daddy yeah. is home, just in case <laughs> you guys are <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, okay, first off, let's just, let's just hit it real quick. All right? 
don't know if you see on little the TV, there's three keys to success. Kill it. The number one most important thing, and I know you can read, but I'll say it for you. It's our podcast, not a squad meeting. Love that. Okay, we're Love running this great. thing, baby. Will did this a good job. Rashawn, Rashawn, you're writing this shit down. Yeah. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two, don't interrupt the boys. You might be thinking, oh, this is a good time for me to come in. You're going to get met with a quick oops. Sorry, we made a mistake. We interrupted. We're going to move on. All right. Hey, come on, Juice. Don't, don't start and with that. And Juice kind of is stuff. already ruining the podcast. And then, last thing, can't settle for field goals, Eagles game. Yeah, uh, you were a bit of a hero that day. There you go. So, we got, we got two did things. Did you put those together? I did. I'll do my best. <laughs> I understand that this is your podcast. I will try not to interrupt. It's our podcast. It's our podcast. I know. You. He just pays for it. You're in charge. I got it. <laughs> oh, okay, we, we already got shots fired. Dude, I love it, dude. Hey, but you you had texted you had texted Taylor and said, "Hey, uh, when's Will gonna stop dodging me on the bus?" Right. I didn't. I don't think I texted him. I walked in the uh, offensive line meeting. Well, that's uh, cool. that's happened. Well, th- it goes back way farther than that. After we first started this podcast, you were like, you kind of gave me like the all right. So whenever you want Dad on the bus, let me know. Because every time he comes well, in the old line room. He walk, He opens the door, and I never look behind me because I always assume it's him. Right. And he walks. You know he's coming in. Hey, chirping. Like, yeah, he comes like in. He's always got three, three in the trigger. Yeah, ready, like, ready, ready to, go. to hit. Three Fire in off. the chamber, baby. Baby walks up, goes up right behind me, slaps the shit out of my back every time. And goes, Daddy's home, boys. What are we doing? <laughs> and I'm just. What like, are we putting in today? What are we doing? And what are we going over? But it's. I mean, it's a decent idea. I mean, summer ratings dip. You just bring Daddy on, and then let's see if we can let's get a little. Hey, we're gonna get clicks. Early, we're gonna early get clicks July. Get clicks early one. July bump. But the yeah. main thing is, you you have you had my number. You've always had my number. I have. And I know you wanted to speak through Taylor, but I, Taylor told me, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's a nice little fire. Like, when's Will gonna stop ducking me? But I'm like, you know, the boy, he's got my number. We can we can all oh, we can make it happen. Which well, we, we go did. to camp July 25th and. You know, obviously, a lot of things can happen. The three happen. of us or just the two of us? Yeah, well, right yeah, now, it's just going to be the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's just the two of us. Hey, I'm not going to lie. When he said we got camp July 25th, I'm oh, already starting to get a little tight. Like, 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 is, is he just going to take a shot at me right now? <laughs> Vrabel's going to open the door and John Robinson sitting right there <laughs> yeah. with, like, your, your letter getting yeah, you invited. Yeah. Oh, man. So what's going on with that? You like Riley Bullet better? No, it's not that we like <laughs> Riley <laughs> Bullet better. <laughs> we, we do not have to do this. We're, we're not. Doing we're it. not going to. Yeah, no, no. We're not. Do you want to? And wanna, listen, if everybody wants to know the answer, it's, it's pro football. A lot of those things <laughs> hey, happen. And that's the hey, definition. Guys, it's it's that the is business, the definition. guys. It's, it's, pro, it's football. pro football. It's part of the gig. Guys, yeah, I, I get it. Willie's not in the room anymore. Like, it's pro football. It's the way it goes. I still hey, say it because it do. still applies. You, you're consistent. You're consistent. You're going from good to great this year, I can tell. We're doing our best. We're doing our absolute hey, best. Hey, did you think about your funny subject matter, the way he wanted to be treated? Yeah. So, like, you're my boss. And so I got there's a there's a fine line, right? Where I what I can tow and I can't tow. So I gotta know, like, do you want special treatment while you're on here? Or do you want to be treated like everybody else? I think you can ask me whatever you want to ask me, and I have an opportunity to answer it however I want. To. Okay, cool. God, so, he's 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 yeah, he's, he's, he's well versed. Solid. He's That's well versed. Well, all right. Um, tell me about the first time you uh, masturbated. How was that? You know the you you we've been through this <laughs> we've been through this it wasn't that great <laughs> he said it wasn't that great. we've been See, through this See, these the are exact... these are our conversations that go on in the old line room and you so will, you'll you come can't in. answer you can't ask a question that you All already right. know the answer tell me about to. the first time you lost your virginity what was you that you already like? know that no I don't yeah, I, 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 I don't you know want, that yeah, one I don't you know that when everybody has to rank one to ten it's like. One, don't say that. Two. Some guys are like a three. First off, hey, no I don't know. I don't know the virginity story. That's the old line gig. When you're in our know. room, it's just and straight. Hey, let me just tell you real quick. Late, Jen, Jay listens, on Jen listens. We to can, this we can. We it can. It was with my wife our wedding night. It was a very special <laughs> yes, occasion. So. It, it was amazing. It was yeah, amazing. I loved so that, special. Dude, I love that answer. Like oh, the best man. five minutes of my life. Five minutes. That's a record setting for your first time. Oh, I'm just taking a drink of their whiskey. You got a follow up or no? What is now, that? I know you basically shoved down both the funny, fun questions. Oh, what do we got up there? So uh, let's start from the beginning. Ohio State. Okay. Did you grow. You grew up in Ohio, right? I did. What made you go to Ohio State? Were you like? Uh, I was commit. I was going to go to Michigan. And what? I, yep. Oh, here we go. We got I a little rivalry. What here, you would call it, Michigan lean, um, up until the time I took my visit, and then. <laughs> it didn't okay. go well. It was a bad, one of those bad. Vi- this is back in when everybody took visits. Like you didn't commit until you took a visit after your senior year, and that you know that's how it was. And so went to Notre Dame, uh, loved it. Went, to, but it really wasn't in play. Michigan was still the lean. And mm-hmm. then I took my visit in December. Next week went to Ohio State, 
and realized that uh, Ohio State was was the place for me. But well, I really just because I, I my first I only went I went to a football camp. I went to the Michigan football camp with my buddies in high school. Just went up there, stayed in the dorms, was out running around on the field, and they asked. Uh, this was when Gary Moeller was still the coach, mm-hmm. and they said Coach Moeller went to see him. I'm thinking we didn't get in trouble already. We've only been here like six hours. <laughs> yeah. And so then he offered me a scholarship just in his office. I had no idea. Like I wasn't being really recruited or anything. And then he offered me a scholarship and then played my next year and went up there on Saturdays for football games. And just, it just wasn't the right fit. Just wasn't right fit. Well, when did I got there, on was campus. there something specific that happened during your visit? Like the guys, you just didn't mess with the dude. Yeah. The, the, the guy that they gave me, it didn't go well. He said he, he got sick, but then, you know, Lloyd, I would tell you this, Lloyd Carr's son, Jason, salvaged the visit. Yeah. He was uh, he was phenomenal. And to this day, I remember the visit because of so Jason So it was that Carr. bad. He, wa- he wasn't my host, but he's mm-hmm. like, dude, I know you're not coming here, but I'll uh, I'll make this night fun. And it was because of your visit that when you changed your mind? Yeah. Wow. Because oh, I think wow. to me, the thing I told Tyler when he went to Boston, was looking at colleges, or even when now Carter's looking, is – don't don't pick the school because you have a relationship with the coach or you think the coach is cool. You got to pick a school because of the players in the school. Like mm-hmm. the players don't leave and the school never changes. Right. But the coaches, you offer them two hundred thousand dollars more, they're leaving. I don't care what they say in recruiting. I I told every kid I recruited the same way. If something else comes along that's better for me and my family than Ohio State, I I'm gonna go. But Ohio State's still the best place for you, and that's yeah. what happened. I went up going to the Texans, yeah, and had to call. And I went, I left before recruiting. I'm like I'm not gonna wait till. February third to, to leave and go to the Texans. I'm going to leave in January when, you know, the job's ready. Yeah. And I told every kid that I was recruiting, this is the best place for me and Jen and Carter and Tyler and Ohio State's the best place for you. Yeah, you had you had a good <clears throat> you had a good like recruiting story. I think you told me who was it? Uh, some li- linebacker that wanted to bring you into Ohio State and you like left a baseball game to like go see him at Ohio State and you're like, listen, man, like I'm not. I, he ended up at Georgia, and you know it was just you're at the beck and call of some of these guys and they're just and he's like. I thought this would be a lot better. I was like, listen, man, I left a baseball game to come, like, see ya. Like, let's let's do the stadium tour where you want to go. Like, But my kid over here playing baseball down mm-hmm. the street. And you always kept a rule with the recruits that came in that saying you were going to – not not that you're going to leave, but you're like, listen, like, well, it's the business. It's, I don't it's, think you ever publicized to another player, like, hey, there's a chance I won't be here. No, it's but I always gig. told him, like, just because you may like me or you may like your position, coach, like, that's great. But if you don't get in and see the players and hang out with the players – those are the guys that you, I mean, your best friends are the ones, my best friends are the ones I played college football mm-hmm. with. And yeah. some of them from pro football, but obviously the ones that you, you go to college and you kind of figure out who you are. Like the high school is tough. It's, you know, a lot of the, a lot of kids, my kids moved around there in different high schools, but you get to college, you kind of figure out like who you hang out with, who your guys, like what they like. And that's kind of where you figure out, you know, who you're going to hang out with and be friends with. I got gotcha. you. And fast forwarding after college, you got you you were drafted in the third round, right? Yep. To the page to uh, Steelers. The Steelers. Your transition from like, what well, what happened at the Steelers that made you a longtime guy with the Patriots? So I think what happened was they tried to play me at D line. I tried to play D end in Pittsburgh. So literally, my first year, I think I played six positions. I played like three technique, five technique, outside backer, and I mean I was all over the place. Just because you were kind of tweener, because I was like, really measurable, tweener. correct. But I, but I salvaged it on some role on third down and special teams. Then I was in a car accident, and I lost like 20 pounds. And so they were like, well, we think you'd probably be a better outside linebacker. So I ended up learning how to play that position. Took a little longer. Took probably two years until I was ready to start. By that time, Joey Porter was starting, and I was playing, but I was rotating. It was like play a series each half. So my contract came up, and Belichick offered me less than what I got as a rookie signing bonus. It was just an opportunity deal. And uh, Cower was like, I think you, you know, I can give you that money, but I, I can't give you the same opportunity. So then I took the opportunity. And you were with the Patriots how long? Eight years. Was that, mm-hmm. was that your favorite? That was probably your favorite stint. Well, I mean, obviously. I mean, it's where we had the most success as a team, uh, individually. Uh, you know, it was good. I'll be honest with you. My first, what, eight years of – Four years of high school and four years of Pittsburgh, I was no lo- no longer than two hours away from my house. Where four, I you're out. saying four years of college. Four right? years of college. Or high school. Yeah, four, I mean, yeah high four years school. of college, excuse me, and then four years in the NFL. I was no more than an hour and 45 minutes from Akron, Ohio, Columbus, and Pittsburgh. So it was kind of like it was good for us as a family to get away and just – it was us. It was us four. Uh, Carter was born when we were up there, and it was just good just to be able to get away and not have – 
just friends, family, uh, being there every single minute. And a lot of your buddies came from the Patriots. I, I, I only say that because I saw you at the – I saw you in a picture at, what was it, the Kentucky Derby yep, with all the boys. The with and the boys. I'm, I'm sitting there like – I'm sitting there chuckling, like, look, look at Brave just with the boys that, like, that he played, so like he played got, with. But he's there, he's a Castle, head coach Castle now. That he there. he's probably there, like, hey boys, remember when I whooped your ass this past year? You know you what I mean? Did, did, you, did any did of that chirp chirping go on? Th- probably. I mean, a pretty good chance. I would I would imagine that that went on. But um, it, it's unique to still be able. To, I mean, suck up was a rookie when I was a player. In, yeah, in, that's Kansas right, City. in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. So I, it's it's kind of funny to look at him and see how he's grown and he's you know got a wife and kids and he's still playing and i mean he was a rookie when i was still playing in kansas city and k lou and k lou last year right um you know i think the one thing with with the patriots is the first year that i signed there in 2001 there was 26 new players on that team like bill had completely just flipped the roster from 2000 to 2001 and willie mcginnis was a was a holdover um teddy brewski ty law uh, lawyer malloy and we drafted Seymour that year. We and Tom, you know, Brady was a holdover, but um, you know, he really was just a backup quarterback. And then Bledsoe got hurt, and I think in the third week, and Tom kind of came in, and you know, we kind of got on a roll and won. I think we won nine games after Thanksgiving, if you can imagine that. Before Tom played, could you could you tell he was special? You're like, well, this guy's a dude. I watched him work, and I, I did think that he was a dude. He was a leader. He, he was a dude that when we went out in training camp and we had a night off or whatever, he was right in the middle with the boys and, you know, having a good time. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I get that that's changed over the course of his career and his life and, you know, his family and as he's gotten older. But I think you recognized early on that people would play for him, that guys would play hard for him. And, he, and we, we threw a lot. We ran the ball. We threw a bunch of screens. Uh, Troy Brown had like 105 catches for seven and a half yard average. I mean, it was just we manufactured wins. Mm-hmm. Um, that first year, but there were so many new players that you know, the Larry Izzo came in, and we had so many new guys that we didn't have a, a chance. We, there was no other way than to come together with the holdovers that they had, and then all these other new guys that, that Bill had signed in free agency. How how did you how did your mindset change? Like after after you playing with the Patriots for eight years, and you how, how long did you play at KC? Two. How much did your like mindset? Uh, change like as you became more of a veteran and year after year like those last couple years in KC how did they differ how they differ for you from Patriots to KC you kind of know you're on your back nine and obviously yeah. you're you're stacking up a lot of years but how much does your psyche and stuff change in your way your the way you probably go about work doesn't change but you probably have to force yourself to do you know and I've and I've said this story before with um about how I ended up in Kansas City I had a year left on my contract and and I wanted to finish up in New England and it was, I'd like a new contract or, or trade me. And, and Bill opted for the trade. And he called me and said, hey, we've, we're going to move you to Kansas City. And Peoli had just taken the general manager's job. And so I said, I'll, I guess I should probably call Scott. And that's about how long the conversation lasted. Um, oh, snap. And I, and I called Scott because I had a roster bonus due, I think, the next day. And he needed me to fly in and take a physical. And, um, you know, Bill and I didn't talk for, I guess, the next two years. And then I start, started coaching Ohio State. And I asked him, I called him, and, I said, what do you think about coaching? And, you know, we talked a little bit. And so um, still obviously close. But, you know, I think when you get traded and haven't been somewhere for eight years, um, you know, there's a lot of emotion that that goes on. You know, half the family roots for them, half the family roots right, against right, right. them. And mm-hmm. it, it's – There's like some bitterness. Yeah, I think bit. so. But it, then, you know, that's why I try to have a lot of honesty with, with players even now, just yeah. having been through that. But I, but I, was, a, I was a rookie that really didn't play – that was a special teams player. I was a kind of that third four year purgatory where you're not starting, but you're right, like, man, right, I gotta right. make this roster mm-hmm. every single August. I gotta I gotta make sure that that I'm on every special teams and I'm I, I know more I'm a backup at more than one position and I don't know, Jen, we'll see. You know, come right. down to the third preseason game when, you know, we gotta play and we'll see what happens. And so I've been that guy, then I got an opportunity to be a free agent. It wasn't a cash free agent it was an opportunity free agent it wasn't hey take the money take the biggest contract it was take the best opportunity and then you know work my way into a contract where I was a player that was was making um, good money that needed to perform that needed to make sure that he was earning that contract and then I was a veteran player who you know, probably and, and not probably but who wasn't as good as he was when he was in his 
10th or 11th year uh, that had to be a leader and try to get Tom Bali and Derek Johnson and, you know, some of these guys, Jamal Charles, uh, Ryan Suckup, for example. We were a young team in Kansas City, uh, but that somebody that had to lead and try to be a coach on a field. Yeah. Um, yeah, because being, being at, say, like being at the – I'm sitting here about the – being with the Redskins for five years and you go and, like, they don't – they don't, like – you know, a deal doesn't work out. Or you guys come in, you guys offer some yep. Redskins don't want to match, and you're, like, wanting to go back. You're, like, you know, you're on the phone. You're, like, yada, 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 this, that, the other. And when you go to a new team, like that bitterness you were talking about, you're kind of, like, you know, half the family roots for them. You kind of – you. when we played them last year, like, I mean, hell, I was in the I was in the meeting room with you guys. Car- Ready? <laughs> Car- Car- Carter had West Car- – they played the Saints in 2000, and uh, I guess it would have been nine. Monday night in Castle, and Matt and Lauren came over, and Jen made dinner on a Monday night, and Carter came down with a Welker jersey, and Jen's like, take that goddamn jersey off. And he's like, oh, I'm not. He's, snap, like, well, dude. he's like, Welker's my boy. And Jen's like, no, we're not rooting. For, we're like, this is really? a, this is a root for the Saints night. Yeah. And uh, Carter's like, no, like, Welker's my boy. I'm like, wearing his jersey. So it was – but that's kind of yeah, – we yeah, always yeah. – it, it you know, half the team will root, half the family will root for the the Warriors, and, the, and half the other the team will root for the Raptors, just so we can have some banter in the house. Yeah. Did you know you were always going to coach? I think I probably did, but it didn't. I, you know, I was so focused on trying to play, and I think like you guys, and when you get done playing, there's so much that you want to do in the off season, and obviously train, but whether you want to travel or, or hang out or catch up or whatever you want to do, go back. In our case, we went back to Ohio. And I tried not to um, really think about it because when you start thinking, I think about your next career, then you're really not thinking that right, you're, you're not playing in as much football. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't really want to think about that until I probably got to Kansas City. I was like, OK, we probably ought to find out what we want to do um, after we get done playing. Yeah. And that's when it started to hit is when you're. In yeah. Kansas City. And then it kind of all it really happened fast. I was doing the um, Players Association. Yeah, we, we were in the kind of the CBA negotiations and I was on the executive committee so we would fly to different places in the country and have meetings for a week they would always change it up we'd go to Washington New York Minneapolis Chicago and that would all come in on like Sunday and then you'd be gone till like Thursday and so I knew that as soon as we put pen to paper that I was going to retire well on Memorial Day Jim Trussell got fired at Ohio State and they named Luke Fickle the interim head coach well Luke was coaching linebackers and he was the defensive coordinator so Luke, on May whatever, I don't know, 21st or whatever it was, the Memorial Day fell in that year, needed a linebacker coach. Right. And there weren't a whole, you know, a lot of guys have already had right. jobs and everything else. And so I was like, man, I need a reason to retire. And uh, he came over and talked to Jen and I about, you know, just wanted to make sure that she was on board with, you know, what the time, you know, it's right. going to be a different schedule and everything else. And and, and you guys are tight. It, you yeah, no, yeah, he was the best man yeah. at my wedding. Yeah, he was the best man at my oh, wedding. Wow. And now he's at Cincinnati and. Um, he was also my host when I went to Ohio State, so he did a better job than the guy at I Michigan. I guess so, man. I got to call it Michigan today. Messed up a yeah. little bit. That's crazy. I so when you when you transitioned and all that, like, how did Jen handle those hours? Because when you're do uh, co- like college coach, that's crazy hours, and it's it's crazy that you're putting your job under fire with eighteen to like twenty two year olds. I, I don't think that she certainly didn't mind <clears throat> the season hours. Mm-hmm. Um, the hours that kind of catch you off guard are the ones in the spring where you're gone. Mm-hmm. You literally get on a plane Sunday and you're gone until Friday because it's spring recruiting and it's Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Florida, Atlanta. It wasn't like just going to Akron right. yeah, and, and just like going there and driving back. It's th- that was the tough part where mm-hmm. I realized like, man, like the season's the season. The schedule's identical as a coach when you're coaching college or you're coaching pro. Except for the fact that, you know, I may check in on a couple guys or text them during the week at night or something like, mm-hmm. but in college, it's, it's 25 text messages or direct messages. It's on like two Twitter. jobs. It is. Yeah. And you get home and you're, even though you might get home at seven, you're sitting there at dinner and a kid's direct messaging you or texting yeah. you and you're like, right. Yeah, do I really want to yeah. do Dude, how much does right it now? suck like stroking like the high school kids off? Well, that, it's really um, become an issue, and I, and I think that you look at all the guys, and not that everybody, you know, a lot of five-stars make it, and a lot of five-stars get drafted in the first round and become great players. A lot of five-stars fade away, and, and you never hear from them again. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's the reason why our league isn't made up of 
guys from Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Penn State, Nebraska. Alabama, and maybe eventually we'll get down to Nebraska. Yeah, like what's your needs to the it, fifth to seventh and then round second <laughs> in our second podcast. Um, <laughs> Alabama and Clemson. Greatest comeback it, of all time they, against Rabel. go from everywhere. Braxton Miller got hurt. You guys, somebody, Greatest Gary comeback Rodham. of all time against Rabel. And so <laughs> I, I can't it, say it, shit. What happens one is three, they three, develop, they, they, everybody develops at different levels. And, you know, I think that that's, it's, it's called de-recruiting these parents nowadays and they're they're so involved and these parents are taking pictures with with their kids on these recruiting visits and jerseys and stuff like that and i'm thinking they have no idea what it's really about to happen Mm -hmm. as soon as they sign obviously i did i was a player i went through the recruiting i got there and you know they try to beat the shit out of you and and then i did it as a coach and it's called de-recruiting and i remember uh being on a visit at Boston College and sitting there and, and listening to the parents say, oh my gosh, you should have seen Johnny in the championship game. He was amazing. And the coaches are like, oh wow. And, and I'm, I'm just rolling my eyes and I'm thinking, don't worry about Tyler. He's been de-recruited since birth. Like I've told him he sucks since You birth. know, so Brave just de-recruits you, the shit you, out you of him. You don't have to it. worry about Tyler. Like he's been de-recruited, yeah. so you don't have to worry. He, he, he sucked, he can barely block and don't worry about him. <laughs> <clears throat> but we call that de-recruiting. Yeah. That's got I got. I can definitely see you having a hard time with that. You well, you have to pump them like, up to get it because you know the other guys are good. Like Clemson, and you get into a recruiting battle. It's like the kid's going to start. He's going to have a single digit. You know, defensive lineman. Yeah. He's a single digit. He's going to start. He's going to have ten set. You know, you just promise them the world, mm-hmm. just because you know the next guy's doing the same thing. And you just say, be honest with him. Like you, you might play. We're, we're we're hoping that you play. And I, I don't know. I didn't do it long enough. I only I only did it for three years and. You know, got some good players and got some guys in one other places. Yeah, you raised those <clears> ranks <throat> pretty fast. Like, you went NFL, college, boom, right to the pros, and now you're here. Like, well, I think you it? try to do the best job at the job that you have. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I've never – you know, there's a lot of guys that work the phones in college. Like, they're calling right now, hey, you know, I heard so-and-so may get a job. If he moves on, man, I'd love to be your defensive coordinator. Like, yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. called – you know, they, they, there's a lot of guys that work the phone. I've never called you anybody. You do – you don't do that. I've never called anybody. You know, mm-hmm. Bill O'Brien – Got the job with the Texans, and he called me um, after the bowl game at Ohio State. You know, we had a little break after the, the Orange Bowl, and he said, uh, you know, I'm going to take this job and would like you to be the linebacker coach. And Jen and I talked about it and decided that, you know, going back to the NFL where we spent 14 years would be the best thing. And then was the linebacker coach. And then, you know, Chip Kelly called and asked to interview as D.C., went out there, interviewed, decided not to take it, uh, stayed with Houston. That, is that, that was at Oregon? <clears throat> no, that was at San Fran. Oh, okay. That was at San oh, Fran. He called me. I was on a chairlift at, in Utah, and I got the boys on either side of me, and Jen's back at the lodge. And hello, and he's like, "Hey, I want you." I said, "I don't have, I don't have a single notebook. I, I got snow pants. I, as long as you don't care if I show up in snow pants and a t-shirt." He's like, "Just let's talk ball." So, it was really the best way to do an interview. Everybody comes in with a presentation and a booklet and a mm-hmm. book and a package and a PowerPoint. I rolled in there with a couple. Bar napkins, a couple notes on a bar you're, napkin. You're lying. You had a bar napkin? Swear to God. That's awesome. Because <clears throat> I said, listen, I owe these kids at least the rest of this trip. It was like a two, two maybe two and a half day ski trip. And I said, I this is our first day. Like, I cannot come out there until these guys get on a plane back to Houston. Mm-hmm. And then I'll fly to San Fran. And so they flew back after the trip, which was like two days. It was like Saturday, Sunday or whatever it was. And then I went out to uh, San Fran. Didn't end up taking it. But my point is. You just do the best job in the job that you have, and then usually people come find you. Yeah. You do have a really good agent, though. We have the same agent. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have the same agent. It's unfortunate. <laughs> you guys could both be CAA guys. Well, you for sure could be a CAA guy. Well, I don't even know what CAA is. Creative Artist Agency. It's the <clears throat> T agency I'm with. John Robinson. It's one of those Uber Uber agencies. We're just the best, man. Who do you call? Do you, who's in charge? Tom Condon, baby. Oh, yeah. That's my guy. He's BC guy. Is he? Yeah. He's the man. You I don't know, know what you call you Pat. Know. Pat's like my day-to-day See, guy. See, Pat's the guy that he has to get to, like, under. And then who do you call when Pat's not available? Who do you call? <laughs> I call Candace Rosencrantz. Right. Yeah, that's who I call next. Got it. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan Hurst. No question. Yeah. I've never talked to him in my life. I go really? Right there, oh, yeah. shit. That's, what, that's the love homo, boy. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when, when you started to get older and you started to realize, like, man, like, it, it, I, I, I don't got it like I used no to. No kidding. Like, what was that transition that was, like? That was Jen. Because I think to myself, I'm like, <clears throat> I'm sitting here, you're five going into your six, and I'm thinking, like, technically I'm, you know, over the hill or on top of it, I guess. And then that decline starts, like, for most people, right? Like, 10, people start to show a little bit. 
probably even well, eight I think to it 10, all depends. So thinking, I mean, I think genetics has a lot to do with it, training and, and just a lot of luck. But honestly, it was Jen. We went out to San we went out to San Diego and I was with the Chiefs. And they had Ryan Matthews. He was a rookie uh, running back. And I probably had eight missed tackles. I mean, I couldn't catch him. I couldn't tackle him when I could catch him. And I, and I came back and I landed and I got home and it was late. And she was like, how much longer do you think you can do this? Ooh. Oh, Jesus. Jen. That's tough. Jen. And I said, uh, Jen, just being a realist. What year was this for you? Probably 2010. I think it was probably 2010. It was the year I retired. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't, I go, was it that bad? She said, you just didn't look like you were, you looked when you were like 28. Mm-hmm. I said, well, neither do you, but I'm not telling you to quit. I'm not telling you to quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she's our number one supporter on Bustle with the boys too. Is she a very is. bad Yelp review no, but coming she, up? That was, I mean, she was just like, "How much longer?" And I was like, "I don't." I, she's like, "I don't." You just don't look the same. And she was, you know, but she's seen, I don't know. And now that I'm coaching, I mean, she's seen probably 400 NFL games. I mean, whatever, mm-hmm. 18 years in the NFL, 19 years in the NFL, 20 games a year, whatever it is, and she's seen plenty of games. It's got to be a kick in the dick, though. You're just like. Well, like I, you, you, you had this you know, big I think dream that that's whole important life. to find somebody that that is honest with you, mm-hmm. and that's a great. I mean, she's she's an amazing wife. I think that um, it's not somebody that sits there and strokes you off and like, oh, you're so good, you do everything perfect. And I mean, it's honest. I mean, there's when it's when it's bad, it's bad, and it's um, you know, hey, well, you know, I come home now and she's like, what were what was what, what was Lawan doing? I said, I don't know, Jen. Why don't you ask him? Yeah, we can definitely don't see worry, that. I'll, I'll, definitely I'll seen have, that. I'll have some for his ass on Monday. There, there'll, there'll be times like. It's a week. I have a weekly text from you during during the season. It's like it's like, hey, Monday Monday will roll around and be like, hey, you know, decent job on this. Work on that. And then, hey, not nah, eh, it could be better this week. Like it's always like you're constantly like running the train, man. You text everybody that, or is it just no? I do. I mean, th- between us, I, it's just between us. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, so I, he, I thought he it was ne- just an us thing. Never texted me until the next no, guy gets so. a podcast. Besides, he said, hey, hey, until the next guy gets yeah, a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Besides, he was like, uh, hey, great job on the skit. That's about. You're still it. living the skit, man. That's a, that, that was, was the last awesome. time we texted. That was that was one of the Until best you skits I've ever seen. If if we wanted to sign you that text, I did. I didn't. <laughs> I've never <laughs> asked that dude. Get the that group chat. That group chat. Did you think that was coming? So for everybody that's listening, like Vrabes texted us a picture of his son and his buddy at a concert. Right, it was during CMA Fest. Yeah, and it, and his buddy was wearing a for the boys shirt. It was yeah. It was, it was Tyler yeah. and then yeah. his buddy for yeah, the boys. His buddy center. The center on <laughs> yeah. his team. And then me and Will are together. We're at the house hanging out, and we just start killing. Like not really me. It was really Will started like photoshopping suck ups your face on suck ups yeah, yeah, body. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and the three of us laughing, I saying like, "Remember I, and when?" I, said, I immediately regret <laughs> send, yeah. including Will. I was like, uh, "He's for the boys," and and you sent the picture of uh, you pointing at Riley Bolo. You're like, "Is he really for the boys?" Oh, and then yeah, I cropped the right. picture of Rabel's head on Suckup's body what? when we're walking to the plane. You also, yeah, you also had a picture of you and him during the Miami yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember the, the yeah, two remember sitting there like, laughing together. Yeah, I said, remember these days? Dude, that's so you funny. You said, I immediately regret texting you guys. Yeah, and I said, what is that? There it is, dude. That is <laughs> that's hilarious. That's so funny. That's you so funny. You able to zoom in on that, PP? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, dude that's that was, hilarious. That is funny. But so uh, how's this thing been going? I mean, how's the reviews? I mean, I have. I apologize. I haven't listened to mm. one episode. Well, that's where fine. can I get it? That's is fine. it on we, Apple? Is it on Apple or a podcast? It's on yeah. everything. Yeah, it is. It's, it's on, on, it's on, on Spotify. Yep. Yep. Okay. You pop it on the way because home. Because yep, I'm going to get in that RV tomorrow, and uh, I will listen. I Dude, will listen. Ar- I will Arthur's listen. a solid beginning. one, too. Arthur's amazing. Dude, Arthur's a solid one. So, yeah, that, well, I, so I caught that. So gentlemen to listen to that Live and Die in L.A., have you heard that, mm. that podcast? Uh-uh. No. Right? So this is like this crime. So Jen's a big podcaster. True, well, she has been lately, but it's like a true crime thing. And this girl, get, just check it out on Spotify. It's, I'll right. check it out. We'll give so it, it, we'll and die. Give it a good I think look. it's like the number two. It's 15 million people. It's probably oh, 15 wow. million more than listen to your Spotify podcast but uh, 14.999 yeah, yeah, yeah. pull it up yeah. to live and die i don't need to see bussing with the boys do Dude, i get a t-shirt or what do i get, we'll get you a t-shirt. Or anything? <laughs> yeah you get a t-shirt we'll get you a t-shirt great got you that uh was that does it have that? a stain on it like I, yours I, I, or no this was a stain that's no, a sweat mark oh i sweat man i'm a sweater yeah the red was that's happening i, I was like there I it is right there red around break. check it out it's up on live and die which one did she say? Is it was about murder mystery or what? Yeah, so it's it's like a true crime deal, and the guy takes you through. He's like a uh, writer for the Rolling Stone, 
magazine. Oh, that's dope. And he does this like interview. He works with this like uh, private investigator because the LAPD just basically cl- they just close the case and they're like, yeah, whatever. We can't figure out who did it. Oh no! So this way. dude like goes on this like manhunt. Yeah. Dude, Jen's a podcaster. Shout out Jen for being a fan of Bustin' with the Boys. Do you no, watch, uh, I don't think fan of Bustin' with the Boys. Here's something I thought you said she discovered while recently. I thought you said she listened to yeah, Bustin' with the to Boys. Make you feel good. They make you guys feel good. Do you <clears throat> do you ever watch like that? Uh, do you see the Ted Bundy film yep. on Netflix? Yep. That shit was wild. It was whack. We do. Uh, yep. I Which one? Like the, tapes, true, the tapes or the movie? I haven't listened to all the tapes one, but the video of uh, Zac Efron playing him. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, He's that like was weird. to the very end is like, wait, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And at the end of the at the end of it writes hacksaw on like the, the the smoked up stuff or whatever the steam that's crazy they say that you walk by like uh 10 serial killers in your life like you just by just walking by people what do you think about that vapes think about just walking by serial Why killers were you looking all at me? what the hell is that welcome to the bus with well, the boys i kind of <laughs> wondered like this whole thing with like the uh fentanyl and stuff going around last yeah. week it was like two weeks ago or whatever like we're 30 people od'd or something so they put the dust. It's in like cocaine, yeah, I have right? No idea. Have you've been in Nashville? Have you? Were you? Yeah, not yeah, in? yeah. I'm in Nashville. Oh, we sent that out on Teamworks. <laughs> Did you send it on Teamworks? Yeah, we sent it out on Teamworks. So you probably would have got <laughs> Oh my it. god, dude. So anyway, hey, you, gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta defend yourself a dude, little bit, dude. What, I can't help what, you. What he's am my, I gonna go in on? He's right my here. boss. He's, you know, I honestly, I hey, tried, but, I tried but, to throw you off a little bit. Oops, I tried to throw you off a little bit. No interrupting. No interrupting. It's for everybody. Number two. I should have oops. I should have oops. Juice twice. He's interrupting. You're interrupting. I uh, will come on, dude. <laughs> he's Be swinging. Better. He's Be swinging better. for the fences right now. I don't even know what I was gonna talk about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's I'm over, gonna, I'm dude. Take off. <laughs> you get out of here. Fuck! I don't even remember what I was gonna say. Fentanyl. Dude, Buck. Oh, fentanyl. 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 Yeah, there's like people. That's like a big thing right now. People, they put like that's like a powder that they put in like cocaine and stuff. Yeah, because they, they said you like cut it up, but what is it gonna do? Is it because it is like a better high or is it just gonna kill people? No, it legit is like it's like a terrorist thing. Like it kills people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so it, it's actually it has meant nothing to, to do. Because they said yeah. they were putting it in the weed and they are putting it in mm-hmm. the, the meth and cocaine and anything. That's wild. It just kills people like... It like, yeah, well, I mean, when you snort something, it, the, your brain, the, the, that cavity goes up to your brain. That's what makes you high. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. So when I fentanyl that. hits it, like it, sh- it must shut something down in the brain. I don't know the I, science. I, literally, I have no idea other than Jen sent me something and I went down to Chick and I was like, dude, there's like 30 people that have died in a week in Nashville and they think it's because of the fentanyl. They've OD'd. Yeah. Damn. Right there, we're gonna get tight Nashville fentanyl. You can, you can cut it and sell it for cheaper. Well, yeah, but you can cut it with baking soda, right? Or baby yeah, you laxatives. You don't have to kill somebody to make it cheaper, right? That's that's Look. what uh, Michael Jackson died of Fent- fentanyl overdose. Spike dose of deaths in Nashville. Yeah, I had no idea. I didn't, you know, I was just been living Will's in the bus. A, Will's a yeah, big coke guy live, too. Been living just in the bus. Big coke guy. Just live in the bus. <laughs> Work out of Vandy and come back to the bus. <laughs> That's like, a, hey, Taylor, come over and do a podcast. My guy can't today. <laughs> so when does this it. run? When does this go? Years will go. We'll have Roman It'll Yossi next week. Hey, oops, oops. Yep. We'll have Roman Yossi next week, and Wait. then you'll be on after that. Great. We, um, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm very impressed how you how you answer. I tried, I thought to myself, I got to rattle you from the get-go. Ask you the jerk off questions and the losing your virginity, and you handled it. I don't. I don't know why you keep. You're at built me. for it. You're I mean, built for the media stuff. But the thing is, is you can't go on the bus and give these, these guys PC answers. every day. Do you guys understand? Yeah, but we're not those guys. I talk to these guys from the day that training camp starts mm-hmm. until the season every single day. Yeah, I mean, I talk to them more than I talk to my wife and kids. Think about that. Who's your but least talk- favorite one? Well, the easy answer would be Kahersky. Yeah. Well, I love how you said his name yeah, wrong, Kuharski. too. Yeah, oh, Kaharski. I love it. Yeah, he did tell me that. I, was, I did his podcast, the Kaharski. Yeah. Who cares? Sorry, I know question. Yeah. But he'll, he, immediately when this airs, much. I'll get a text. It'll be like, oh, you said my name wrong. And yeah, like, yeah. Whatever. He texted me, like, yesterday, like, when are you going to come on my podcast? <laughs> I was like, fifth of never, dude. I don't know. You know what? I, I, I do. They all. I have to respect. They all have a job to do. Right. They do. And, and I think that uh, the biggest thing that I'll say about our media is that when I did that polar plunge for Special Olympics in f- February or March, whatever mm-hmm. it was, down at the stadium, jumped in this this big ass tub of uh, ice water. Did you backflip? I did. That was yeah. that was impressive. And so it caught on, and I was like, somebody was joking on Twitter, and I was like, yeah, if Kursky come down there, and I'll drown him in the water, see if he can, how long he can hold his breath, and then. <laughs> Next thing I know, we got like ten, we got like ten or twelve people from the media, mm. all joined up and raised money to help. They all jump with me or after me with the kind of the raise money for Special Olympics. So we do have great. They, these guys are on fire, dude. That's Zach they, in the back, dude. He handles his stuff. 
I love how you got exactly you are, what you wear to yeah, practice, too. Yeah, that's a squad meeting That's, that's exactly right what there. you wear every single day. No question. You got your vest. Look at the boy! <laughs> Two inches away from just literally being a coma for the rest I've of your life, dude. I've been hit head harder than that. That, that was the second. Been. So I jumped with the two Olympians, and my legs are like frozen and then they're like backflip and i'm like i can't feel my legs i just are jumped in and i climbed out they have like the uh, paramedic you see the dude the paramedic that's a paramedic in case somebody like goes it, into in shock. the red that's already in the water yeah there's zach that's right there gotta on the make left. you feel zach who go back go back look at you kind of feeling yourself there, though, with hey, that backflip. Zach, look, go back pause it there's zach right there on the left oh <laughs> <laughs> the little kid <laughs> little zach back there uh, great job coach vable <laughs> Oh my god! So, that's how awesome. did this idea germinate? Last year, when we were Last during year in the OTAs, cafeteria, it was literally. I think the first conversation was, "We should start a podcast," and the next conversation was, "Yo, you know, it'd be cool as like a uh, Hunger Games thing with the team." And yeah, so, that, yeah, yeah, that's right. Literally, like it was, it was like, like two. Cur- he, Taylor was talking we about didn't doing. Do, we didn't do that this whoops, year. Whoops, 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 yeah, whoops, we didn't whoops. do it. Hey, hey, whoops! whoops. Nope. No, we didn't do that this year. Hey, yeah, I know you should have. That was actually that was a fun little gig. It kind of. It kind of, oh, whoops. Yeah. Taylor was telling you about the Lion King deal. Yeah. And you're like shutting it down. And then that's when we're like, yeah, we need to just Which, start that might be a thing. Day. I have a couple of ideas that I want to run by okay, you, yeah. actually. We'll get, we'll we'll get, get there. Is this, oh, we get is this your podcast? Yeah. <laughs> we'll we get 25th, back. 25th, we'll run it by. I have, hey. a, I have a question about a different thing, though, that you might be interested in. Preds, Nash, uh, Preds, Titans at the Sound Stadium slow pitch softball game. Beautiful. Talking about kegs. Third base coach. I love how that's the first thing you say, kegs. Well, yeah, we'll have kegs in the side. It's like a fun thing. Sure. Bags. I'm all for it. You'll, you'll be into that? Love you, it. you join that? Great idea. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm running that by Butch. We're getting that going. I think it'd be great. We'll I'll donate money. Up. Play for the yeah. Titans? What's that? I'll play for the Titans. You can you, ump. You, uh, that's what he you said. Can ump. Yeah, he you said. can definitely ump. That'd be awesome. You could be the, 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 the slow pitch softball guy. Yeah, he goes, He goes. we'll let you We'll let you ump, Will. I said the same thing Taylor said. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty awesome for you. No, but we <laughs> we would do we would like you know you know how it is when you're in the sauna with everybody and just kind of the, all the locker room stuff that goes on and then guys were like, yo, you should do a podcast. Oh, other guys said that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you uh, haven't listened to one though, so yeah, you no. haven't listened to one, and you haven't you know you, you don't really come in the locker room. Nope. You that's, said you that's sit, for the players. Yeah, you said you sit in the cafeteria. You know all the conversations going on. In the Did cafeteria. you see? Have you seen the new cafeteria? It's almost finished. It looks amazing. Is it awesome? It looks. What's awesome. the deal with the food that's going to be in though? Because it can look great. Uh, we'll but talk we're about bringing, We'll talk about it later. Twenty fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty fifth, twenty fifth of July. Later. <laughs> hey, yeah, there's some people here we don't want to know right. about what's I'll going be, on. Hey, there. I'll be texting Jim. Hey, can I get a pass for the practice? <laughs> <laughs> Would you let Will come with the boys to yeah. do do a yeah, podcast? You can put him on the fam. You can put him on the fam friends and family <laughs> list. <laughs> you can do that. Son Yo, of a, dude, son of a Will, bitch. defend yourself, dude. dude. What comeback is there to have? Have you seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? No. Okay. That's the worst thing you've done so far. But there's a scene where the guy gets his limbs cut off and he's still trying to fight, and that's you right now. <laughs> have you seen it? Everybody, yeah. Every, seen everybody's seen that movie. You see, have you seen Animal House? Monty, yes. Monty's with a Y, right? There you go. Yeah. Look at, dude, Zach is so on top of it. They have, like, Monty these guys These guys are riding horses, but they're just, like, clicking, like, coconuts together. It's like a naked gun. Yeah, it's, well, you've probably not seen Naked Gun either, huh? It's like Airplane. God, <laughs> you've not would seen you do a podcast with this guy? I know. Well, it's a we're. I'm I mean, like I'm in a transition right now. I would tra- think that, that would be a prerequisite right to I'm do actually, a podcast. Yeah, I'm firing everybody. Is that you've seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail or Naked Gun mm-hmm. or Airplane? Got to. That's why this podcast have, is going to be good because I haven't. You need to get off the goddamn bus. See the guys. See the guy behind him. So this guy's pretending to ride a horse, and the guy behind him is like. So the yeah, sounds great, guys. It's a great movie, actually. Because you've never seen that. Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Have you seen that? No. Will, we need we didn't cover this at our breakfast last year that that recruiting meeting we had. I was basically recruiting you. Remember that breakfast? That was, that was a solid little recruit. Was. But what, what hotel was that? Was that uh Renaissance? Was that the Omni or something? Renaissance or Super Eight? We we, we only use that one for the, yeah, for the later later like, free agent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we put you in the Super Eight. Yeah, it wasn't in the Super Eight. It was you're whatever right. on uh, Broadway. No, we're at the top. No, and you're not at the top. Very very and I we had a nice little breakfast. He took me around town. Really? Yeah. He's talking to me about what goes on on Broadway. See, I don't know if I could handle like a drive with you. Why? Dude, it was honestly he tricked me. He fooled me from the get go. Really? Yeah. So you're like yeah. a good How recruiter. I fool you? Yeah, was I was that like anything other than what I was. <laughs> I was like, uh, you know what the problem is? Is you're really aggressive. We're very, you and I are very similar. I could see that. But the thing is, you're my boss. I love it. <laughs> yes. 
Dude, uh, I, am, I, am I your favorite player I'm, you've ever coached? Um, besides probably. me, probably up, up I would say so. around the middle area, probably. Not. I would for say Will, but that, that was Will. But now we're talking about me. No, it, no. You what miss what, every what, time he break the huddle, and I'm like, get your ass to quit walking the line. Of hey, show. but I hey, know. hey, hey his, let me get some. Where the dogs go to the pound, my baby. Dude, I'm. Dude, I bought in. I hear all about it. He comes like, hey, Will, man, you should have saw me today. Variable had me. He had me break down the huddle. That's not true. That's very true. Hey, and that's very true. He's like, hey, I've been on my leader stuff lately. My puppy. Hey, that's not true. Actually, it is true. <laughs> I would say I that, that and leadership has grown this year. It has been more than evident. Love hey, that. Hey, it's, it's been, a been more choice. than evident. I know what I was last year, and it was me. Now I'm fixing it. It was like transitional. I mean, it wasn't transitional. It was me thinking I was better than I actually was. I would nothing I, more. We talk all the time. We, and it was funny because he's like. I, they walk by my ha- office and I'm like Taylor, and he's like, and I'm like, it's not every time you come in here. It's not like I'm not sometimes say though. Bad. Sometimes it is bad, but then sometimes I try to say, hey, <laughs> this is when this is what we're doing good, and uh, it's been more than evident as far as just being positive leader, getting guys going. So. What do you think you're? Hey, 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 I see you, ball. I see you, ball. Got you up out of there, nerd. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> you already said. No, he goes, got better. you up. Out oh of there. my god, dude! But I'm telling you, we've actually had that conversation. I was like, because because things was are going mediocrity out of you. Yeah, he Holy maybe shit. was. I told Will when we met, I'm not like, enjoying all this, my friends, not enjoying this anymore, boys. All my close friends in the team that I get really like tight with either get cut or injured. Mettenberger, Campanero, you. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure what to say. I don't know what to say either. So but you're like, you're um, going from year one to two as a as a head coach. That's why I wanted to transition to before you guys wanted to just. Take a little minute. Um, what what do you think your big, biggest changes are as a head coach from year one to two? I'm trying to just be more consistent, and I don't know if I am. I, I'm trying to be more consistent in hopes that it, it carries over to the players and to the meetings and to the field. Um, I mean, one week we're, we're here, we're, we're beating the, the Super Bowl champions, we're, we're beating teams that make the playoffs, that are winning playoff games, and then – you know, the next week or a few weeks later, we're, we're not at our best. And so I got to figure out how we we get and stay at this level uh, week in and week out. So I think that it starts with consistency. Um, I think that, you know, I think we, we pulled back. We tried to change the schedule a little bit in OTAs. Um, I don't think we needed to run as many team reps as we ran uh, last year because we we're putting in two new systems. And I felt like it was important that we got a lot of work at that. And I, I based on what I saw, uh, I thought we had a, a productive spring and a healthy spring, which is most important. Uh, so we changed the schedule a little bit. And so, you know, we'll try to do that in training camp as well. I think I think I know where some of the, the road bumps are, where, where some of the speed bumps are, and I can try to avoid them. Not that, you know, distractions are going to happen. It's just how we handle them. But I think some of these things that come up, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that happened last year. Like, whatever, like, we'll just do this instead of what we did last year. Yeah. And when you say try to be more consistent, you hope – uh, what like where where would you find kind of those? Just in, kind of continue the kind of continue the message. You know how do I allow guys to make mistakes? I think that's that's critical. Um, continuing to think about that is how do I let guys? How do our coaches? How do I let guys make mistakes? Um, as opposed to just immediately correcting them. It's like hey, what happened? What'd you see? And and a lot of that is time sensitive. It's you don't have a whole lot of time, but if you can allow the guys to make mistakes. Um, and, and, and ask them, hey, if they don't know, then, then you got to fix it and you got to teach them. But if they know, they're like exactly like, hey, I, I got the second widest and I got buried down on the guard and or I got buried down on the tackle and the, and the end spiked inside. Well, then he knows it. He just has to fix it and, and go on. We don't have to sit there and, and teach our protection over again. So, I have I actually <clears> have a, a question that I care about. Do the fa- um, I know that's a half an interruption. So when you say questions, do your fans – so we, we put out something that, hey, we're having you on oh, today. Nice. Just so people are going to tweet us and gotcha. ask questions. You'll probably see on Twitter when you open it up next. Yeah. You can retweet something if you want. Okay. Follow us with the boys. Yeah. Um, when you guys go through cuts and after that fourth preseason game, what like is it just you and John that sits out or is it the whole coaching staff? And like, are you guys get down in those last three, four Will Comptons? Like, what do you guys do? Do you guys like say, oh, hey, my like. God. I <laughs> um, that is a great question. So there's always input from John's staff, who is the scouting department, yep. and the coaching staff, and I try to do my best to represent them. And ultimately, we have meetings, you know, and John and I listen to what the coaches say as far as it relates to personnel. Um, 
But at the end of the day, I, it, it's John and I that have conversations, yeah. and we, we, we are going to make the decisions. And you know, I'm I'm lucky to be included in on that. He's got the final say, but I would say that we, you know, find a way to come to an agreement. Mm-hmm. So if you had like two guys on the fringe, let's say like me and Jack Conklin were on the fringe, sit like we're playing the same, blah blah blah, like it's really similar, and you're like, oh, we we got to get rid of one of these guys. Would you have like someone like Keith come in and be like? Kind of like that that um, that breaker vote, like you and John, you and John are split, and Keith's like, well, this guy's attitude or this guy's work ethic, those types of things. Well, I think that he would. I don't think we we would necessarily um, have someone else, whether it be the position coach or a scout, um, break any tie. But what we would try to do is look for special teams value, um, versatility. Can this mm-hmm. guy play another position? Um, how is this guy in the locker room? I, I'm just trying to look at examples um, that you could use to, to differentiate two players that are that are very similar. Um, and I'm sure that money would even play a part in it. Mm-hmm. You know, when you got down to, you know, the, the sixth, fifth or sixth tiebreaker as far as with the player. Or is, I mean, this got to be, the, we're talking about the 53rd guy on the roster because if we're having this a hard of a conversation for these two guys, maybe these two guys are better than someone else. That's and a, so, yeah. You double you know, up there, and yeah. Then. You're saying like if these guys are so similar, they're probably better than someone else, and you got to keep the best, the right 53. And yeah. so, you, you have to manufacture and maneuver things around. I got you. Does this guy have practice squad eligibility? Does this guy not? You know, I think there's a lot more that goes into it. I had one more, but I forget already. So. When you're looking at these stats, yep. Which category, like which? It, it's probably Teddy, but which um, stat? stands out like the not not in total like one play which stat are you looking at here that was the most memorable Strip play. which my game? rookie year <clears throat> oh really your rookie year playoff game against the patriots strip sack uh, drew bledsoe uh in a two-minute drill at the end of the game we won seven three to go to the oh, AFC left tackle or right that's, tackle that's bruce armstrong left tackle mm, that's impressive dude that is solid so stats here for anybody that's we, listening and can't see this paper. Tackle, 74. Do we really think that that's 74? Do we think that's, that's 7,463? See how that line, like, cuts it off? <coughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, I think it's that. a 74. Yeah, right. I see that. That's definitely a, that's. Oh, wait, there's a little line there. When they count quarterback no, sacks as a tackle, and I had 57 of those. How'd you fit? Yeah. Right. Well, okay, anyway. Right. Anyway, stats. Quarterback sacks, 57. <laughs> Interceptions, he had 11. Four fumbles. So oops. Like special, oops. Oops. How do we, oops. Short He's talking. Oops. oops, oops not a squad oops. meeting. Force, <clears throat> force fumbles. Rashawn, write this down. Force fumbles, 19. Receptions, 10. Tutties. Touchdowns, 10. Now, one thing I do want to talk about when you talk about consistency, I've seen how you've shown consistency in our uh, meeting rooms. Because when we go to squad meetings, I feel like I get a question every single time we hit a squad meeting. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm three rows back in that. Right in the thing. middle. It's the middle. You, you do. It's the middle. Is, but is it, though? Because you got Jayon. I was going to say, is my dog Jayon still get him? No, Jayon gets yeah, him. Yeah, I love that. It's, uh, like, yeah. it's, it's KB. It's <clears> KB <throat> to be like, am I right, KB? And then it's it's Rashawn. You guys <laughs> it's Rashawn, got, I mean, it's Rashawn for questions, me Harold, for questions. Is it Harold? I'll tell you what you do do, though, is you get Ben Jones two to three times a year with the, uh, staring, at, staring at flies, man. Got him in the spring. And you're like, hey, Ben, what, yeah, what about this? And he's like. Because uh, uh, he assumes <laughs> he's that he's dude. like, yeah, super smart center guy. Like he assumes, like I'm not gonna ask him. Yeah, and he just, uh, just and, and mouth like, mouth open, swallowing bugs, dude. Dude, you get tight, man. When when Brave calls on you, I tell You'll you, what, sit there and I'll know. tell you what we did do is from my first year to now, probably the most stressed I am during the season is walking to squad meetings. Love it, because I'm like, I'm That's like, yo, you got it on edge. Because the thing, because you know him, it's like, hey Taylor, we that blah 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 question. No, that's okay. We'll find a different left tackle if you can't answer that one. Like, let's let's go. Uh, Conklin. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's John, so, you get that one down. So, hey, John, make sure we write that down. Find me a guy like this guy, not that guy who can't answer questions. It's solid. Going into squad meetings, I would. Act, it wouldn't be that because I'd be like last, so I always like would see him just holding coffee. And uh, plus, you were taking notes, and you want to be a coach, and you will be a coach, and you were. I appreciate that. Yep. So do you guys want? Wait. That was part of our breakfast. That? We had that in our that breakfast. Was part that of was part of our breakfast. breakfast. You do want to be a coach someday? Oh my Possibly. god! Possibly. Possibly. Would you like? Possibly. What's What's the end game for you? Like this? Like? Oh, buddy, I gotta find a way to try to start enjoying life. That's is gotta be part tough. Of it? Is so much part stress. Of it? Just it's hard to turn off, man. Like these next couple weeks. Like yeah, I know we're gonna go on vacation and watch baseball, but it's just 
you know, having a switch to be like with the family and Carter's friends, and it's not just like. And not just sitting in a lot like a chair, just thinking just grinding like through. It's, sitting at it's the easy. IPad, watching You've been doing your whole life. It's easy to go look at that and say, okay, I can do this all day. Harder to. I mean, I enjoy stuff. it. I I enjoy it, but it there's still time where it's like I'll be thinking about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna practice or what. Cleveland's gonna do, or what Indy's mm-hmm. gonna do, or Jacksonville, or Houston, or it's natural. It's natural for you and us to be football players. Sure, because we've been doing it for it's, it's all we know. It for me, I have a two-year-old daughter, and I'm like, it's that is harder for me to do naturally than to be to go and play football. Yeah, I think, but you know, I've seen you with her, and I, you, you know, you love your girls, and that's the most important thing in your life it has to be and and i think that and i hope that the team and and that football is is a very close second um i i try to do the same way and so hopefully um, you have to find something like guys you're gonna gonna play and you're not gonna need to work but but you're gonna need to work Mm -hmm. financially you're not gonna have to work but you're gonna need to work for some sanity and give you a reason to get up every morning and go do something that that you love and that that you can compete at or you know that they that you don't have to just sit there and you know, your your kids are going to be in school and they're going to you know what are you going to do you know so this this was something that got me up and you know kept me motivated and kept me um you know trying to compete whether it be in recruiting or game planning or whatever it is if you are looking for ways to you know enjoy life a little bit more you're doing a great job with that mustache thank you what um getting mixed reviews but what, i think who? it's grown don't say Jen. I think it's growing on her. Yeah. Probably like I did in college where she was go. scared to death of me for, for two months, and then <laughs> she finally came around. <laughs> See, I just propo- Maybe three I, I proposed to Taylor in five weeks. That way she didn't have a chance to figure out. This guy's out really of his mind. On. This guy's a psychopath. This guy's nuts. I love it, though. What made you do it, though? Just a change up. Is it, though? Yeah. Or did we, like, when we met, I had a mustache, and you didn't, and now you have a mustache. Does that, like... I don't remember that meeting when I thought about the mustache. But it was the season was over. I'd had the beard since God knows how long and uh, wanted to change it up. Looks good. I like it. You got the tickler or what? You got anything right there? A little soul? A little, you got a little, little something, though. No. Just trying to. That's I a don't total know. preference point. Is it? That's like a little, a, a little soul patch? A yeah. little bit. See, just I, to add to that, you know, I just, it's too bare and everything. It's shaved down, so. We'll see. I don't know. God. You guys got the ink? You got, you got, you got ink? No. No ink? Nope. You got anything? None. Yeah. Would you ever get a tattoo? Nope. Way past that. If Ty- we win Tyler a, wants if one. If we win a Super Bowl and I'm playing for you still, will you get my name tattooed in your body? <laughs> your name? No. What would you do? Um, I would do something if you wanted to make a bet. Matt Neely. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, shaking his head. Matt Neely said he would cut off his dick. For, for a Super Bowl. For, for a Uno Super Bowl. And I, I said, and I have no problem saying No. I wouldn't do that. Would you cut your dick off for a Super Bowl? Oh, been it's, married twenty years. Yeah, probably. You've got three <clears throat> as a player. I guess we'll be married for twenty years one day. Would you? Would, if, if you, 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 you won't need it. If you came yeah. home holding a bag of ice, and Jen was like, "Oh, honey, would you do?" She'd be like, I thought you already got fixed. I, I made the already, ultimate I already got sacrifice. I had to cut my dick off, honey. We're gonna win a Super Bowl. She'd be like, "Eh." All right. I, she or would, would she it, be upset? She'd probably be on board. She would be like, do you want me to do it? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do it now? Do you want to do it now? I made the ultimate sacrifice. She's like warming up a knife in the fire, like yeah. getting ready to go. All right. Uh, this one uh, is for Vrabel. It says, what yeah. characteristics in Marcus Mario do you also see in Tom Brady? Uh, competitiveness. Um you know, I think the one thing we talked about with Marcus in the off season was as he goes into this second year in this scheme is is to have a much better presence. And and I think that as you're learning the offense for for the first time, like he has in the previous four years, you know, it's hard to have complete command of the offense. And I think that he showed that in the spring as an understanding and and being able to tell guys, hey. This is what you have. If guys look at him with that look, like I'm not really sure what I have, he's telling them, you know, he's getting the, the alignments right. He's able to handle the pressures, the protections. And so I think that there was a, a much better presence um, this year going through the spring. So did you guys notice like the first couple of weeks, like they were like 
making articles up after people came on here and people were like quoting everybody remember i had that conversation about the podcast how yeah. we can sit here and talk for an hour or however long i have to sit here and talk and um <laughs> then they yeah. write an article about it and yeah. and they use everything that i'm i have said and will say as as quotes like they asked me a question right <laughs> and they've never you know will never have asked me those questions but they're going to write an article about it because of being here and i and i do think that that's lazy reporting i think that's lazy you know this this is this is something different but i guarantee you this week when i'm gone there'll be articles oh, with quotations no wrapped question. around it yep but so that's just okay. say me and it's done it's easy that way taylor yep yeah there you go hey, would you will i don't know i was trying to think yeah that is a bummer it, though it, that it, you can't it, just say what you want like you can't just like go about your business and I and, and I said and, and I I tried to shut it down. You know, I mean, I stood up in front of the team. I was like, "This is stupid. You guys shouldn't be doing podcasts." Trust me, trust me. I heard. <laughs> you know, right, I, I heard he's right after the meeting. Very supportive. There's no way he very supportive. told you that. I said, "Listen, man, you go have a blast, but understand, they're going to wrap an hour conversation. They're going to wrap quotation marks around yeah, it. Yeah, I heard. And they're going to try to fit whatever narrative they want to fit. I could tell. I heard, you, and I was like, "Yo, Ray will suffer the boys." No yeah. question. You could. I could tell while you were doing that meeting. You were trying to put it around like, how do I not say this is Taylor's podcast with Will? You know, you were like, hey, listen, there's things out. And then you and I locked eyes. And uh, you're like, Taylor and Will moment. started a podcast. Yeah, but I think that it's, it's something you guys have to be able to do stuff outside of football. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to have things that you guys enjoy doing, having a good time. I like the fact that you had teammates on. I like the fact that you had Arthur on. I mean, <clears throat> so, and, and I, hopefully that guys will, you know, Come on. I mean, I don't know what the plans are during the season. If You, you got any sponsors? Not yet. Other We're, than Taylor? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Not yet. You no, knew I, Daddy was coming on tonight, boys. Hey, Dude, I'll tell you what. I'm you glad, I'm what glad, you I'm glad Taylor you can about be humble. Will. I'm say glad Taylor. About the uh, oops, oops, oops. Yo, I, was the oops. oops. I was in the middle of Oops. <laughs> hey. I was sitting there, and I was. Go ahead. Oh, it was my turn? You can go now. Thank you. Say what you want about Will and who he is as a person and as a player, but don't take the dad thing from me. I love too, how you get to come on and humble this far. man, calling himself dad, like his real dad sitting in the couch right yeah. now. First off. when he signed, After he signed that contract and I wanted to try to take that phone he was on and I tried to shove it right up his ass when he's running out to practice. And I was like, daddy, I'm daddy. Just so you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm that. Oh, what a great And dad. Taylor would look at me and be like, he is my dad. <laughs> you, I remember. I'm back, dude, don't admit that. He's like, he is, though. I'm like, okay, let's go Who practice. said that? You. Oh, pillow talk. You, you guys do, are pillow do you guys, talking. Do you want to You guys are pillow talking. I'll tell you what. I remember when I when I signed my contract and I was sitting there and I was just getting ready as business, business as usual, getting my cleats on, getting ready to go. And you came over to me and you whispered and you said, you're my favorite player of all time. No, I said <laughs> you better, and, and oops, you better, oops, you better oops, never oops, miss a block. Oops, oops, and we're not oops, chipping. Oops, 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 oops. He's talking because we're after it. And, 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 and <laughs> he said, he said, hey, don't tell any of the guys this, but you're my favorite player of all time. I, and I just, your presence, being around you, I love it. And I'm so happy you signed this contract. And God willing, I'm going to get you a third if I can. Yeah. And I said, and you want me to tell and And I said, and I said, Hey, Vrabes, I got to get out to practice, dude. I got work to do. And you said, can you just stay a little bit longer? I said, you better block your guy every single play. And you know what? We I, pay you, you better block him every single play uh, through did. the whistle. And you know what the worst part is? We played, uh, we practiced Tampa, and um, JPP yeah. uh, like beat me in a play. And you said in front of the team, you're like, we're paying this guy how much? Dude, that was And I was, was sitting there though. like, yo, dude, I'm exposed right now. Like, is it worth it? you guys spun around, right? I was like, is it worth it? And then I, I was like, "Yeah, it's definitely worth it." I was brought up in a system <laughs> yeah, where I was brought up in a system where to, where every player, including the best players, were held the most accountable. Yeah, like that's, I get it. That's how I was brought rather, up, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, but that's all I know. I'd rather you say you get on me about stuff like that than I give up a sack and you'd be like, "Well, yeah, well, you know, well, he's doing the best he can." Or, or there's some coaches I've had. Where you'll mess up or a player mess up, and they'll sit there and they'll bitch out the backup. Like it wasn't the backup's fault. That's like hilarious. it was the it was the starter. It was the guy that we're paying to to do his job. Yeah. Don't don't yell at the backup. Like that's the why he's the backup. Like that's why he's the backup. That's why he's the backup. It's pro football, fellas. Come on now. 
Figure it out, guys, boys. Guys, come in close. Break this huddle down closer. It's pro football. Yeah. Have you, dude? I don't like, say like, break like the it other down guys. Closer, I no, say, he goes, get up here, dude. dude well, same thing. I get in here close, like it's guys, pro football. I don't want to yell. Like the I other... never said that when I say bring it in here closer. I don't say, it's dude. Pro football, you're li- hey, that was like that was like one of my you've favorite favorite little you've literally bits. Literally done that. You like uh, like in the, the other guys. Room. Have you seen the other guys? When the guys are like, all right, guys, bring it in, bring it in. All right, stop. <laughs> Couple steps back, just a little bit, and Too then bring it a little, little farther. We'll bring it in. That that's you. But you got to run it, man. You got to do your thing. At least you guys are paying attention. Yeah. When you make fun of me. That's what you yeah. say when uh, so I if did you the play, skit. you have to play the skit at least. I don't have I... the footage. You don't have it? I never recorded it. The we other guy did. Sure, right? AP has yeah, AP's got it. it. We got it. We do got it. AP's are a video guy if you're wondering. It'd be like a party. It'd be like a parting gift. We'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah. in, in, a, in, a, in a fruit basket. But on July 25th. <laughs> hey, remember when you let our team in special teams tackle? <laughs> and I deactivated you for a game? With six and a half. What'd you have? Seven? No, I was in double digits. Brett punts it out of bounds every. I could cover Brett's kicks. Brett can boom that ball, and it's out of bounds. It's like fifty yards out of bounds. Yeah. Just closest guy to the guy that goes out of bounds. That's it. Tackle. I got him. I got him. Does that count? No, it doesn't. No, it does. Oh yeah, it counts. Put me on special teams, <laughs> dude. You would never cover a punt. I'm faster than you. No, you're not. Brave, help me out. <sighs> Say your answer. Guess what? We can. Uh, we how's can, the we hammy? Can, how's the hammy? Can, hammy's good. Yeah. Hey, I'm good. in. Vrabe, I'm in my prime, brother. It I'm ready like to go. It looks I know like you it. said ever like okay. Com's a little swole, so he, the boy's staying in shape. <laughs> well, it's because the shirt's so tight. Well, you yeah. know, I had to wear a medium. I I do. Th- that's the one thing about punt team. I sit in there and I try to tell these guys. I said you. It's so hard to be an. You have, they're an offensive lineman, and then they have to turn into a linebacker or safety, like the skill set. So I'm like, why don't we have our offensive line coach like teach the protection part of it like the kick slide and everything else because that's why that is true that is funny <clears throat> that is true that bit you didn't answer yeah yeah you, yeah who yeah. you think's so faster me or will um like how, if, if how, you how, how love, far i how love far? the fact that doesn't matter about it too yeah it's really bothering me i can't wait to get on the field tomorrow and we have we have i cameras, would so i would we'll say that if it's over 50 yards i would say lawan okay well guess what i'll have what I'll if send it's 30 video yards to you. i think we'll get you really that's interesting. I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be the opposite. I think you get him in the in the longer. You think my top end is higher yeah, than his? Short, stubby legs. You get them a little. Yeah, t- you get they, they, hey, they got a little, these <laughs> legs. Monty Python. A little Barney Rubble legs. These little hey, <laughs> these try hard legs. Do they man. spin really fast and he stays in the same spot. That's you. That's I can't you. tell you how many times <laughs> we've shown the play against the Eagles, though. Which one? The when undercut. Was, yeah. The slice. The slice. Oh, I should have picked that off. But I meant. We I tried it to him. It's, it's, it's a teach tape. It's a teach tape uh, banjo. Yeah, my favorite part about that play was Coach Pease's reaction in the locker room after the game. Him just – I just love Coach Pease. I think he's yeah, I think he's a stud. Talk about him for a second. Did you see the punt that he Yeah, got? I was just going to break Dude, that I up. did. I, I, shit. I, I grabbed it off Twitter. I saw that the Titans tweeted it, and I sent it to him. I'm like, yo, look at you out there moving around, dude. I, I mean, it looked like he caught a 1,000 punt. I mean, it was just – Dude, and he changed and direction too. Fingertips, boom, spike. I wish we had film of Arthur Smith. I wish we put that out there. The back pedal. No, he. So they, they had they the had number one rule about. of cover, like of catching a punt: never step forward first, because you can always run it's faster. It's like being an outfielder, forward. yes, coming in and then you center field, dude. Everybody plays it at one point in their life. Figure it out. Yeah. So, but Dean is, uh, and it was just awesome. And the reason I let off with that is the reaction from the players. I mean, I thought Rash- they picked him up, and I thought they were going to drop him and break his hip. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought something was going to happen to him, man. I, I mean, they had old. him up in the air. I mean, but the excitement that the players uh, genuinely had for for Dean, uh, they love him, they care about him. I, I know that they play hard. I, obviously, you guys played hard for him. Um, they will play hard for him. He's a great teacher. And, um, you know, it's not easy. You know, I got a lot of ideas, and there's a lot of things that, I want to try to do and he you know he wants to combine with what he's done and and so that's a always a, a good conversation that we have and a great dynamic and you know this job would be difficult um you know if Dean wasn't part of this he was one of the first guys I called and he was my coordinator in, in New England and you know and obviously we had a respect for him and the, the guys in Baltimore I mean he's coached um numerous Hall of Fame players and again last year Ray Lewis went in and 
and he sheepishly came and asked me could he go to the induction ceremony i'm like are you kidding me like we'll, we'll get you a flight and we'll get you back get you wherever you need to get to and yeah. it was like during camp and again um ed reed's going in this year and ed reed invited him and he came back and he's like you know can, do you think i can and i'm like yes of course you can like yeah, no any of our coaches coach hall of famers and they ask him to come you can have the day off during training camp to go be with a player that you coach yeah. that's going in the hall of fame yeah because he was going to retire <clears throat> after his baltimore he was and you got you got the old boy to come back yep it's recruiting was that was it very, yeah. was it really hard getting him to come back well i mean i think that he had set his mind up and that him and mel they have you know they have a vacation home or a retirement home that they enjoy spending time at um and i think that he was going to do a lot of that and, and go spend time with his wife and then you know after you know it probably was a weak conversation or dialogue that we had and then you know he made the commitment to join us and i'm, I'm glad that he is braves hey, hey hang hey. on one question it's a fun one would you rather yes oh, so would you rather question <clears throat> all right answer this question or leave leave yeah. <laughs> Okay. Would, would you rather? Okay, we got to go back a little bit because picture yourself, rookie year. You had met Jen then. Yeah. Okay. Your mom and Jen. Bad shape. Okay. You follow me a little bit. I'm there. You either have. Would you rather have sex with Jen with your mom's subconscious or your mom with Jen's subconscious? With Jen. With Jen's body, but your mom's brain. Your mom's one experiencing it. Say, oh, Michael. <laughs> so Michael, I will, don't, Michael, don't grab so, me like that. <laughs> so I don't even, I mean, that, that I guess is a, a, a decent question. I'm not really sure. I, I'm going to end up having sex with my wife. The body. Yeah, hey, the you're, body. Not, you're not wrong. I chose I, I choose the girlfriend, too. Yeah, mom's so got to take it out. So we were in yeah, we college. Yeah, mom's got to We went home with a couple, you know, friends and their girlfriends to back home to my parents' house. That was good. And we had gone out, and so we were arguing. Jen and I are arguing. It's one of those like two, two, more, two in the morning arguments. Yeah. And she was like sitting on my lap, like crying, and like she's like, "Why?" Are you? And I was like, oh, "We're fine." And so my dad like walks out, <laughs> so and then he's funny. like, Whoop. he makes a U turn, and he like goes back, and she's like, "Oh my god, I think your dad thinks we're having sex." And I'm like, "No, I don't think so." The next morning, he's like, and I was like, "No, we weren't. It was like." No way. Fully clothed. It was just like how it looked at two in the morning. And, and she was just she crying was petri- on your lap. She was petrified. That's hilarious. That's awesome. In the, in the family room. Like on like a like an ottoman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and that's where I thought you this was going. Like, you know, it was going to go to like in your parents' house or something like that. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. No, I went weird out in left field. Okay, boys. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it thanks fun. a lot, bro. <laughs> And I gotta they, go. I gotta go to Atlanta tomorrow. Yeah, go to Atlanta tomorrow. All right, we're out of here, boys. We're busting. We bust. Past, present, future. We're killing the base.